Hello, everyone. Hope you can applaud the presentation. That's good. Well, thanks for your kind invitation, especially from Dr. Hari Keshan. And I'm really uh, proud to be here because of uh, minus five degrees Celsius in Moscow and plus 31 degrees here. I like to be in warm and hot position. So, okay. Uh, let's talk a bit about the uh, coexistence, uh, about uh, two different entities, but which are really resembling each other, two granulomatous diseases, the uh, sarcoidosis and TB. So I will not face my conflicts of interest due to this presentation, because everything which I, I want to say is definitively uh, applicable to any type of procedures you've done. So, and I want to start from a patient. A patient's story is suspected sarcoidosis after COVID, and you see here on a chest CT in a metastinal window, a huge lymphatic nodes, but mostly in the halo regions, and subcoronal lymph node is a bit enlarged. In a pulmonary window, a patient has some infiltration, some, uh, some uh, ground glass opacity in the right middle lobe. Then, what types of biopsies can we use to diagnose sarcoidosis? These are magnificent six. The first one is uh, bronchial valve lavage, followed by endobronchial biopsy, and especially important if you don't see any lesion in a bronchial tree, you still can perform a biopsy and retrieve a granulomas in around 40%. Then you go with a transbronch, transbronchial cryobiopsy, endobronchial ultrasound, and last but not the least, rigid conventional needle. Here you can see the 16 gauge bore needle, which can definitely retrieve even much more uh, tissue than even 19 gauge from, uh, for EBIS. So, uh, a possibly a game changer in diagnosing metastinal forms of sarcoidosis is EBIS. And uh, EBIS can be performed uh, uh, by tra transbronchial approach when we put the EBIS scope inside the bronchial tree. And also, we can use an EBIS through the esophagus, and this would be called USB procedure. Mostly, uh, we perform this procedure under conscious sedation or general anesthesia, but it also can be done under local anesthesia with transcricoid injection. And usually, we, we make three to four passes, mostly in subcarinal area. So what are the pros for this procedure? The pros is that it's really a high yield, and it's really safe. The, uh, the incidence of complications is lower than 1%, probably. The cons, it's expensive and the problems with the tissue acquisition, especially when we talk about pathology. And as you can see in the picture, we see the lymphatic node behind the bronchial wall, we perform a navigated biopsy. So what are the statements telling us? Uh, they're telling us that according to the, last, the latest guidelines from uh, uh, American Thoracic Society, in patients where there's a high suspicion of sarcoidosis, the biopsy of uh, lymphatic node is not needed. For patients when uh, the bilateral hyaluronic uh, lymphadenopathy, again, there are no any recommendations. You can do the biopsy or not. But for the patients where the uh, tissue acquisition is necessary upon the clinical request, uh, the EBUS is a preferable choice rather than metastinoscopy. And there was a good study which was almost 10 years ago done a prominent study which has compared the diagnostic yield of endosonography versus conventional biopsies. And there was firstly stated that the EBIS uh, in terms of efficacy is lower than USB FNA. So the transesophageal approach is lower in efficacy. But again, if you will go a bit uh, later in the PubMed and you will find the literature, the latest study which was performed internationally in Europe, more than 300 patients enrolled with uh, sarcoidosis finally diagnosed. But the final efficacy between trusesophageal and transbronchial approach is the same. But let's get back to our patient. So we decided to perform a combined procedure. And firstly, we made a bronchial valley lavage through the EBISCOPE. It can be done, not often, but it can be done. So then we performed an EBIS TBNA using a, a corona-shaped needle. And then we even made a transbronchial cryobiopsy of a subcarinal lymphatic node using 1.1 uh, millimeter probe from Erbe. And as you can see here, we're definitely finding the hole 
uh, in the bronchial tree and stick the 1.1 cryoprobe inside it. And there is a, probably nothing for the patient because this, is, uh, this amount of blood is not uh, definitely clinically significant. But afterwards, before the extubation, we have a look through the video bronchoscope of a high definition. And here you see the moment of the extubation. So what can we see behind the wall? We see the huge lymphatic node, probably mostly uh, benign up to the uh, information of elastography. And here you can see the cryoprobe and uh, performing the biopsy that's directly under elastography control. So what did we retrieve? The corona-shaped needle gave us a lot of amount of blood, much more blood than usual, and we see still granulomas. But when we have it compared to the cryobiopsy, we retrieve a multiple non-necrotizing granulomas, no uh, blood at all, just mostly a tissue. And if you will look at that in a higher resolution, you will see definitely there's a lot of granulomatous, uh, granulomatous information without any necrosis. So we came finally that all the tests which were done firstly for tuberculosis were negative, non-necrotizing granuloma up to cytology, pathology for both in needle or for both excesses, and the PCR MBT is negative. So we waited for a couple of days before our, our clinicians will make the decision of sarcoidosis, but finally we retrieved a back check positive. So this patient actually has a TB, not uh, sarcoidosis. So uh, again, when we talk about tuberculosis and sarcoidosis, when we use them, you see here is a great pretender, um, a lady in her 50s who was initially accepted to an oncology clinic with a suspected lung cancer, but uh, several days before planned surgery, she undergone a bronchoscopy. And after that, she immediately came to us and what have we seen on the, uh, on the bronchoscopy uh, using HD bronchoscope. You see here the total or a subtotal uh, lesion of tracheal rings, and this is a necrotic uh, tissue, and this is endobronchial tuberculosis. But otherwise, the most problem with the diagnosing of metastinal TB is a culture. If you will look at the literature, and uh, it's really good that most of our Indian colleagues are actively publishing because the tuberculosis is active mostly in Southeastern Asia and Russia, not in, in Western Europe, you see that the efficacy of cytopathology is much higher than culture and PCR in confirming TB. And when you look even at the meta-analysis, this is not as high than for malignancy or for sarcoidosis. For, for diagnosing an infection, we need culture and PCR, and these results are not so good. Again, in another case, a six-year-old boy with suspected tuberculosis, and you see here uh, in the subcoronal lymph node, a calcification, and there is a picture of ultrasound bronchoscope from Olympus where we see a tiny lymphatic node, which is not surprisingly for this boy, but also it has a lot of calcifications inside. So we perform a biopsy and we retrieve some cores, and what do we look? What do we see there? We see some necrotic tissue, and we see some pigmentation, overpigmented over tissue also, uh, using both techniques, a uh, uh, typical biopsy needle and the uh, corona-shaped needle. But what about PCR and culture? They are all negative. And only after surgery, this patient has received a diagnosis. He has also uh, some complications in that. So the last one case, this is an asymptomatic metastinal lymphadenopathy, a typical situation when the patient is coming to us. No symptoms, just done a chest X-ray or done a CT scan, and he has such a problem. So again, we're performing a complex investigation using a rigid scope, and this is a Fuji scope now. And again, we're performing a bronchial valve lavage to take a cell count and to uh, also exclude infection. And then we're performing a biopsy and a cryobiopsy and what do we see? Again, a lymphatic node up to EBUS image has a multiple calcifications inside. So we also can suspect tuberculosis, but finally, as also in uh, elastography, we can see that there is a benign lesion, even if we see on the B mode, uh, uh, multiple calcifications. And so what do we see up to the pathology? We see non-necrotizing granuloma, 
but it doesn't mean nothing for Russia, for example, because you can see it also in tuberculosis. So we wait up to the end uh, of the culturing process because the patient has no any symptoms and he has no any lung, lung function impairment. So can we rely up to elastography or B mode? So when we look at the B mode, even when we see some hypoechoic areas and even and we see the necrotic tissue, uh, we cannot be aware that this is 100% TB. And from the other side, if we see the, uh, the quite reliably good-looking sarcoid lymphatic node, we can say that this is sarcoidosis. This could be also tuberculosis. But can we also reply, uh, rely on the uh, elastography and differential diagnosis of TB and uh, sarcoidosis? And the answer is in this uh, brilliant paper, also uh, published uh, last month uh, by Indian colleagues, that if you will see at the sensitivity and specificity, you will see that there's around uh, 40 to 60 percent. And the final uh, accuracy is 0 0.5, just tossing a coin. You will have or you will not have. So you can rely upon, uh, uh, you can use a luster, but you can't trust it. So trying to perform the biopsies. So in last but not the least, our local data from Central Tuber Research Institute in Russia, still unpublished, sorry for that. But sarcoidosis is more than 500 patients involved, and you see that the smear and cell block have a definitive difference. So the cytology in our clinic has a better yield, but when we compare the EBUS and EUSB approach, they are equal. But when we look at the tuberculosis, unfortunately we didn't have much patients with isolated lymphadenopathy. In other words, mostly we diagnose the pulmonary TB for sure. You will see that the, uh, the yield of cytology and pathology in diagnosing of tuberculosis is appropriate, so to say, 60% around. But when we have uh, a culture and a PCR, the yield is much, much lower, even lower than anything what is reported, probably because our TB is uh, quite different or, or genetic differences and so on. But in conclusion, anyway, do you have EBUS or not? Never give up. Be like Shigeru Ikeda. You should never give up and use those equipment you have, already have in your hands. So be a team player, not ignore uh, the request from your clinician, and if you are the clinician yourself, don't ignore your bronchologist. So don't abstain from classical biopsies, the bronchial valvage, transbronchial lung biopsy, EBB, and so on. They are still useful in diagnostics of, of sarcoidosis and tuberculosis too. And uh, combine the biopsies. No man is an island, and again, if you use the one technique, it will not be enough for many, many cases. Thank you so much.